Let's have a look at James cleverly answering some questions about this wonderful idea to bring back national service. For those not aware of it, the last time national service existed in this country was in 1963, more or less, if I remember off the top of my head. But anyway, let's have a look at James answering some, some questions here. It should be quite funny. I don't think this policy has been in any way thought out in any shape or form. But here we go. Let's start it from the beginning again. What happens if someone says, I don't want to do it? Do they go... Let's right get back to the beginning. Sorry about that. Home Secretary, before we discuss the detail of your compulsory, compulsory national service proposal, a couple of yes-no questions. <laughs> Um, what happens if someone says, I don't want to do it? Do they go straight to jail? No, there's going to be no criminal sanction for this. No, no one's going to jail over this. But what we have seen from the other... No, but I could imagine Mr Cleverly or the party, if they came to power again, which I really hope they're not, I really hope that these guys have uh, made a, a massive F up and uh, destroyed themselves a bit more. I could imagine benefits being cancelled or other issues arising for young people who didn't want to do it countries that have got similar schemes to this, particularly the, the Baltic and Scandinavian countries. Where are the Baltic Republic's note located on the map, Mr Cleverly? They are located right sodding next to Russia and therefore maintain a constant state of high alert because of that. Scandinavian countries also have issues with that. Unless Mr Cleverly imagines a wave of Spetsnaz parachuting over london are, are running in at dover i don't really see that we're, there is a need for for this this seems to be an ill thought out policy enlarging the army yes perhaps but not by this method firstly there is actually very very wide scale uh, uh take up acceptance and enthusiasm for this so we we want to make this compelling we are going to compel people to do it but also we want that's of course a question you could only answer one way or the other or really be informed of if you are from the baltic republics or the scandinavian nations and i'd somehow suspect the issue at ground might be just a bit more nuanced want to make sure that it fits with different people's uh, aptitudes and aspirations so the military bit and you i'm sure we come up i want to i want to come yeah, up okay. to that, but just, let me ask you another just very brisk question mm -hmm. um are people going to get paid for this if they do the volunteering or the, the civil option rather than the military option? So the military option will come with a salary because it is longer and therefore yeah. by extension. The, uh, the other elements of it uh, uh, won't be. And uh, I mean, and that is very lovely. So we want to make young people into effectively slaves here, do we, Mr. Cleverly? Are doing donkey work for bugger all money. I can remember a large number of schemes like that being floated over the year. So basically they're faced with the dilemma of either becoming potentially cannon fodder and be trained up for future wars to service a military industrial complex, or they can jog on down to the local hospital and wipe up pools of shit for, for nothing. What a lovely future you offer the young people of Britain, Mr Cleverly. Much well, that's very much in keeping. So, I was in the reserve forces, as you know. The military reserve forces are paid. Um, uh, uh, the uh, for example, special constabulary are not St. John's Ambulance, um, uh, but, uh, people are not so. So, that mix is, is actually, and in my opinion, should be anyway. One, you'd get higher standards, and two, what they're doing is essential to society. The fact that you have anyone doing it at all is amazing. But that's another matter. Quite in keeping with the structures that we already have. Yeah, but honestly, that's that's your first problem, isn't it? Are you going to well, get it's not been year olds? It's not been a problem for, so far. Sign up for a weekend a month for nothing. Yeah, because actually, what we've seen, as I say, the uh, the military reserve forces are paid, and their firefighting, uh, policing counterparts are not. So that mixed portfolio, that mixed ticket, is a mixed portfolio. In other words, some people are paid bugger all to do essential roles in society. Are are you? Is anyone here happy? Or listening to me? Happy to you know get themselves phys physically fit by jogging around the park and then stick on a firefighter's uniform and risk being burnt to a crisp for for sweet FA. Put your hands up in the comments if you're willing to do that. Or if you think you should have to do it.
is well established. And what we want, of course, okay. is we want to make sure that everybody is involved because this is about this is about building right. a, a, a network across society. All right, let's uh, let's start with the military side. A network where the uh, inevitably the kids at the bottom will inevitably take the biggest brunt of this shite. It's inevitable. The working class kids will inevitably face the biggest brunt from that because kids from the middle and upper classes will have parents who can support them even if they do take the civil route uh, option and don't want to join the military. Kids from the bottom won't have that option. Thanks, James. Austerity politics and push creating more underclass kids again. Fantastic. Welcome to modern Britain. Because uh, you know who's going to hate this? Uh, your colleagues, you're a soldier, your colleagues in the military, uh, your, your um, Defence Minister, Andrew Morrison, said to Financial Times uh, about an idea before this came up, mm -hmm. a similar idea, there's a cost, and that, that is training people up, looking after them, managing them, and then they disappear as they're becoming vaguely useful. So... Yeah, exactly. My father was a soldier. He would have pointed out to you that it takes at least a year or two to make anyone useful as a soldier to gain any skills worth having at all. If you keep them around for that, they're just going to learn the most basic skills. They might be useful in the event of an all-out invasion or for civil defence or for similar roles, but realistically, my father was in the army for oh, around six years in the Irish Armed Forces, a small army, and a lot of people left because of lack of promotion was the main reason they left, because it was so small that getting promoted was ridiculously hard. You could stay there for many years and not get promoted, but a year or so, they're just going to learn the basics, get them, get physically fit, learn some basic skills. A few of them might decide to stay on who and uh, become NCOs or become commissioned, but it's not really a route to rebuilding an army. The people who are going to operate this clearly aren't going to fancy it much, especially as our, our armed forces are under strength, they've got lots of work to do. Do they need some people who are not that useful for them t until they're about to leave? Well, what we are, what we're looking to to do, first and foremost, no one is going to be compelled to do the military element. So whilst it is compulsory... No. So no one's going to be compelled, but if you don't go, you're not going to be paid. So come on, James, stop talking shite. Basically, it's compulsion. It's a soft form of compulsion. But some the military will do. You're be, hoping that some will do. Some will and do. And my point is that the military won't nature, like it. No, and of course, by nature, the people doing the military element will have volunteered to do the military version of it. So they will be motivated to join uh, the military. They will have the option. Yeah, by motivated by the sheer fact that they, if they didn't do it, they wouldn't get any money in their pocket. That's a great motivator. It's a great, a great way to create an unequal society. Bravo, James. More th no authority policies of inequality in Britain. Opportunity to spend uh, a year with the armed forces. And then, of course, we suspect that uh, many of them will want to either go into the regular forces or uh, as I... Yeah, because there's always a constant need of, of cannon, cannon fodder, isn't there? Always a need of body uh, people to stick in body bags with flags on and you're running a bit short of it nowadays. I've done, no, have many, many no, decades. No, but you're telling me why service. they might want to do it. What I'm asking you about is a military which can't actually recruit actual soldiers who are going to make it a career. Uh, that's what they really need. And now you're telling them, oh, by the way, you've got to look after some kids for a year who aren't going to stay. Well, what we, what we are going to see is the people going to the military bit of this will have volunteered to do so. They will be motivated. They will... You're telling me the same have, thing again. Yeah, I know, because I, I'm, I'm going to finish my point <laughs> this time, is that, is that they will, of course, uh, have had a period of military training. They will have uh, utility to the military, and that is part of it. Minimal utility. It will be the same as saying that somebody who was trained for a... I don't know, a year would be equivalent to a doctor. At best, they might make a, 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 mar a marginally skilled paramedic if they put in an intense amount of training, and that's at very best. Realistically, they need two or three years training for that. It, but not the whole point of it. The, the broader point about this national service is that we want to build a society where people mix with people outside their own communities, mix with people from different backgrounds, different religions. And you're going to do that by a soft form of compulsion, aren't you, James? I can see them mixing. 
I can certainly see them mixing and thinking, well, well that James, I can certainly see them mixing, go, that James cleverly, that boy's a C-U-N-T, you know, proper C-U-N-T. That's, I can expect, being a popular topic of many conversations about Mr. Cleverly. I can expect Mr. Cleverly becoming a marvellous hate figure for many figures if he got this through. Frankly, I don't realistically see this this ever even becoming more than a damn squib, and it's the stupid policy of a government that seems to be managing to batter itself to death with garden rakes fling, flying up in the garden in its face, but you never know. Okay, different income levels. Uh, and so some of it is about utility to the armed forces. That's part of it. But a, but the bulk of this is about helping build a cohesive society where people mix outside their bubble, whether it's through military service. Their bubble. <laughs> yes. Yes, James. You might mi help them mix outside their bubble more if you'd have supported other options. But let, I don't think the young people of Britain are quite so stupid as you think, James. I mix with quite a lot, a lot of people a lot younger than myself, and they don't strike me as particularly stupid, James. They would see through this this rhetoric in three seconds flat. Some of them would express themselves in a wordy fashion, such as I am. Some of them would express themselves in, in slightly more streetwise fashion, but they'd all see through you, James. And to echo some of the kids who live on the council estates near me, man is talking sh wallocks, bro. That man is talking bear crap. And he certainly is. He's uh, basically, if you expect kids to be uh, sort of made over into cannon fodder, we are not living in Victorian England, and kids are not willing to be, be doing this anymore. You want them to join the army, provide them far, far better reasons than this. Patriotism is a virtue, but not enforced patriotism and not this kind of silliness. This other uniform service or non-uniformed uh, uh, service. Look, I, I can I can hear the aspiration here, um, and we can have a discussion about whether what you're proposing is really serious. But let me put this to you: um, this is really about getting the attention of people who say they're going to vote reform, to whom this would. Oh, that's put his, put the cat among some pigeons. Yes, of course it is. It's about getting the attention of some of the older voters and the reform voters who will be thinking it's time to put manners on the youngsters and this will teach them skills and get them to sharpen up and give them a good dose of discipline and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Would appeal, wouldn't it, isn't it? What this is about is response... I mean, it's politics. Well, I'm a politician, so you shouldn't be completely surprised that um, that I'm involved in politics. But the point is, this is politics. Oh, good. Is, I'm, I'm glad no, a but, politician but, who says it's political but, 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 is ready to admit. No, but politics, politics is how we deal with really serious uh, issues. And yes, with uh, possibly with better policies and than crap like this, which is designed to try and nick some ground back from the from the more reactionary parties like Reform. Anyway. Let's see what happens as we go on. I'm going to go on for a few more minutes with this and put a link to the article. It's quite long, and if I start keep commenting on it, it'll take forever. But really, this is one of the stupidest, stupidest policies ever dreamed up by a government in its dying em in its dying moments as the embers of their political fires burn low. And this is about dealing with what we know to be the case, which is which is social fragmentation. Too many young people uh, uh, live in live in a, a kind of a bubble within their own communities. They don't mix with people of different religions. They don't mix with different viewpoints. Okay. More people are saying that they wouldn't go out. All you would do is force them to live in barracks for a year, and then they would go back to that anyway, or two years if you made it that long. Absolute silliness someone who didn't okay. have the same political views and what we're saying is to respond to that is a political imperative okay well let me ask and you to, and to respond to that is about bringing people together in different okay I, military I, uh, medical I, I get, volunteering i get all, I, I get all the so why don't you do it like some of the other european countries you are referring to then james where the civil option is also paid wouldn't have a, i wouldn't actually have a terrible problem with that if you actually tried to instill in kids a a notion of like um civil or social responsibility uh, and had them do a, a say six months or a year or something like working with i don't know the ill or old people or something and pay them for their time after all they are human beings and it should be afforded the di dignity of being paid for their labor 
You can't just use them as free stooges like that. That Flood defences and defense environmental protection. It's all so, perfectly reasonable. Now, let me ask you, as a politician, do you think that this will help you gain the attention of those reform voting uh, the electors? No. Uh, no, because as much as I don't like reforms, politics, or, or, or their politicians a great deal, I, don't, I, I do credit them with slightly more brain power than to be swayed by this kind of complete idiocy. I don't think they're headless chickens to be lulled in by this piece of idiocy. Uh, in, for example, the Red Wall constituency. So what we, are, what we are motivated by is making sure that we have a cohesive society. Now, okay. of course, right. this... No, look, Trevor, this is an election. OK. So, of course, at an election, you come up with new ideas and you okay. come up with ideas that we hope... And who came up with this idea? Was it about three in the morning? Were cans of, re cans of I don't know, special tenants involved in a a large amount of draw after 48 hours without sleep, because it certainly sounds bloody fucked up. But it sounds like the kind of thing someone had come up with after a massive amount of sleep deprivation and drug abuse. It certainly sounds like there's nothing that somebody normal would come up with. People might just start thinking, let's look at how national service worked last time. What were the inherent problems and advantages of it and the pluses and minuses of it? And they might look at it like that, and look at other countries. Instead, it's just been thrown out at the last minute, like f under five weeks now before a general election, <laughs> uh, in a ridiculously kind of, let's throw a sop out way to, to try and gain a march on reform. Absolute idiocy of its finest kind. Absolute, absolute stupidity. Laughable. Will yeah. attract votes to us. There's, there's nothing illegitimate about right. that. Look, but, it is, but it is fundamentally about addressing the okay. concerns that we see about social fragmentation. All right. uh, we're trying I'll, to pump prime a new generation of. I'll, yeah, pump is the right word. Except so used in possibly a better, different way. Volunteers. I, I to wonder, do something I wonder, that, that I, I've spent a lifetime yeah. doing and I've I, loved every minute. I understand. I want to talk to you about this. Yes, but you're a career officer, James. I don't think every kid wants to be a career officer. That's a major decision to make. I have family members who've been career soldiers. It's a big decision to make. It's a it's something you choose to do for the whole of your life. Yeah, you're a lieutenant colonel in the in the British Army. Not every kid wants to go down that route. And quite frankly, that would involve training kids to a very high level. You can't just walk in the door and be a lieutenant colonel or walk in the door as a commissioned officer. First, it's, you know, there's going to be limited num room spots for commissioned officers. That's going to require them to be at least at the level of a degree level of education. Most kids aren't going to go there. Most kids are going to be used as privates or at best corporals if they get that far in a year, which is unlikely, and they're going to be used to do mundane and silly tasks. That's where it would go. Election. Did the uh, Prime Minister explain to you why he chose to call an election when you haven't actually selected all your candidates? Well, the reason we've called the election now is because we've seen inflation get back into normal levels. That's enough for, on that subject, as I think they skip to other things after this point. But absolutely the most one of the most bizarre and silly ideas I've heard from regaining political ground ever is this. It's not even, as I say, that the idea of using kids in roles where you might teach them the virtues of patriotism or the virtues of service so, so society is a bad thing but not done this way this is compulsion and it, it's disrespectful to younger people who it's basically attempting to use them in a, in a nasty and manipulative way especially the notion of oh you'll be paid for the military role version if you, of this role if you go to that but go to the civil version forget it nasty manipulative jingoistic i'd say as well cheap attempt to gain ground on reform in a very childish way.